This is the Mandalorian's Explosion Alex After Show, breaking down, discussing, and reviewing each and every episode of the Disney Plus original Star Wars series, The Mandalorian. My name's John Blight, and joining me, as always, Ashley Hobley. Hey, John, excited to be here as they fail to get Mandalore again. <laughs> yep. They're, they really just... It's like Charlie Brown in the football. Every time they think they're going to get it. <laughs> nope. what, an, what an analogy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this week's episode I uh, was titled uh, Chapter 23, The Spies. Directed by not Rick. a good title. No. No? There's not really any spies. Well. There's like there's one. one. Yeah. So Singular. I, yeah, that, that we know of. Let's come back to that. <laughs> Let's put a pin in that one. Well, uh, if they're there and they're not revealed, are they really spies? Yes, there's <laughs> still fucking directed by Rick Famuglia, uh, written by John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Uh, synopsis I forgot to get, but I'm sure it was terrible. But yeah, the survivors return or something. They try and save Mandalore. Um, overall thoughts on this week's episode, Ash? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. Obviously, starting off with a bang with like uh, revealing old mate who's been, <laughs> it turns out it was a bad guy all along, and that's why she was doing all the bad stuff. Uh, you know, she, we've, it's revealed there's this uh, shadow council that's kind of uh, keeping the imperial hopes alive. Um, that's all cool. Moff Gideon shows up for the first time. It's always great to see Giancarlo Esposito. Uh, and then you know, yeah, they try and get to Mandalore. We get to see the tension between uh, the two clans of uh, two tribes of Mandalore. Those who like to wear helmets and those who do not like to wear helmets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They have to work together to, you know, find this forge. Turns out uh, it's been a Imperial Empire base for a long time. <laughs> Rip. Rip. You know? Yeah, I, there was a lot to like about this episode. Obviously, it's yes. got a lot of um, actual things sort of happening, uh, which very eventful episode. But it's still, I appreciated that even amongst all that, we still had, um, it didn't, I still had, we still had downtime. We still had that sort of the the midsection there where they first get to Mandalore and they're all cruising along on the, the little desert ship and you sort of get some downtime there. So I didn't feel like the episode was too rushed through getting through <clears throat> everything it wanted to do before, you know, obviously we only got one episode left, but so that was good. Starting with... The way the episode opens, though, I really some really cool things there. I'm sure there's some that I haven't even clicked onto. But so, firstly, uh, Gilead Pelion is the dude shouting out like Fraun's return, Fraun's return. Obviously, Fraun's name getting sh- just shouted out a bunch there to the point that it's interesting you know, timing. <laughs> Well, it's perfect. Like, obviously, timing, I don't know it? if they. <laughs> I mean, if they plan to reveal that trailer, like as you know, right before this episode came. Yes. Out, you think, think they planned like the new Star Wars celebration was set at this date? And yes, they're like they, we're going to show the trailer, and then the following week we're going to mention it a bunch of times. Yes, they've had the date set for like two years. Yeah. So yes. Okay. Do you think it's too 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 much planning? Just to- yeah, I think that's too much planning. No, I think it because I, I think I, you could totally have that trailer after this. You know, you could. The only reason I think, I mean, do you think Thrawn throws up in the next trailer, uh, next episode? No. Okay. Because Ahsoka's still doing the whole Thrawn. Thrawn is returning. That's mm. what. She's saying he is. Oh, these, gonna, are the, and, these are the whispers she was talking about in that trailer. Yes. And then you have Hera trying to pitch, I guess, the New Republic that we've got to prepare ourselves for what's coming and stuff. So mm. I think Ahsoka's series is about her catching wind that he's out there definitely coming back. He's not going to come back by the end of this series. But yeah. um, Pelion is a character, though, that hardcore legacy fans would love because he's he's the the right hand man to Fraun in the the legacy book series. He's name dropped in Rebels and a couple other things in the same position, but he, this is the first time he's actually been seen. 
he, he was never seen in Rebels. It was only a voice. And so this is the first time you've ever seen that character in new Star Wars canon. And obviously, considering he's the guy who's like, Fraud's coming back, everything will be great because Thrawn's the man. Still going <laughs> to presume he's the second in like Thrawn's go-to right-hand man. So that's how that'll work. The other interesting character here was, um, what's his first name? Brendan Doll? Brendan? Brendan Doll? Fuck, hold on. Uh, yeah, I got it. Brendan Doll uh, Hux, Doll- Doll- right? Brendan Doll Hux. Which is... I'm sure uh, which is- that name, name made me, uh, my ears perk up. <laughs> yeah, so this is Hux? Hux's daddy um, <gasps> from that you would know from the sequel trilogy of movies played by Domino Gleason. Domino Gleason. Yep. So his dad is played by his brother in this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, his dad is played by Brian Gleason. Uh, yeah. Yes. His brother. Yes. Uh, I don't think Missed this opportunity. Is- for what? Should we go Brendan? <laughs> what, just have the same, look exactly the same? <laughs> like, that'd be kind of weird. The Brendan Gleeson, uh, the dad. Oh, but yeah, but he'd be too old, I think. Even I this is like, he seems too young to me, but. So, th- but th- this is not a spoiler because it's not really to do with this show, but for, in the, I think it's in the comics or the books or one of them, it's actually revealed that the the whole reason that Brendan Gleeson is, not Brendel Gleeson. Brendel Hux is not seen in the <laughs> the movies, and like he his disappearance is actually because um, his son kills him. So that's how that goes. That's how he had the magic. It really goes spoilery. Yeah. So spoiler, but spoiler. yeah, apparently he gets killed because he's the last person who knows about Phasma or something like that. What yeah. I read from quickly reading the Wikipedia page. Yeah. So that's how little baby Hux ends up in charge of the whole. Uh, I mean, really, it makes a lot of sense now. How Hux got his position in the first order? Nepotism. He's, yeah, because <laughs> he was a son of one of the the yeah. higher ups in the. That that actually colors that more impressively now. Mm. Like, oh, here's a nepo baby. Yeah, it all makes sense. We didn't even know that term back in twenty whenever. Yeah, twenty fifteen. <laughs> so, uh, so all that so I really enjoyed that this scene. It has a very comic book, uh, like Legion of Doom, <laughs> I guess, feeling to it. The fact that Gideon is even like, or oh, the Shadow Council, and you know, like <laughs> all this, this sort of stuff. I, I, it's sort of corny, but I'm, I'm aboard it. I can get, I, I can get down with this Shadow Council stuff happening, which is cool. Makes me wonder if that'll be something that continues when. You know, maybe we do see the Shadow Council and we see, like, Fraun actually, like, Skype in one day. And, he's, and then Old Mate's like, what were you saying? I told you he's real. <laughs> he, I told you he was coming back. <laughs> he's never believed me, but here he is. So that would be cool. Uh, yeah, so then when we get to the actual Mando stuff, uh, arriving on the planet was cool, seeing the... Uh, the the ex imperial ship that they've just spray painted a living fuck out of underneath. That's a lot of paint to cover the bottom of that to draw the Mandalorian symbol would be. <laughs> it was very large. But Worth it. I'd also say maybe paint it on top so then people can see. You know, oh, just, they're gonna see their foot. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's like we'll just paint it on the bottom. So anyone coming head on thinks we're ex imperial, but yeah. Uh, you get the whole, and then let's go on this. I, I'm going to say straight away, Grogu and IG11. IG12, so stupid. Yeah. IG12, sorry, so stupid, but so good. <laughs> just... Dylan, we start the season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. going to try and re- revive IG11. Yeah. Now at the end of the season. We've got Grogu motoring around in his corpse. Yep. God, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was I was laughing when he was driving around that room, just going, "Yes, yes, 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 yes," and then it cuts to the street. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> like such a kid with a stuck fucking on that one button. Yeah, Fisher Pikeel toy or whatever Fisher yes. Price. <laughs> yeah, like just no. pressing the button over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> Just hear the noise, really, more than 
technically the first time we've seen Grogu like straight up communicate something in a way that people have been able to understand. That's not true. Ahsoka understood him. True. Yeah. Fair. Well, I just like, it's like, no, no, yes, no, no, yes. They're going to add a third button. This is the way. <laughs> Why haven't they added that one already? Missed opportunity. Uh, so then when they gather, everyone obviously, they're not messing around. They're not like, you know, let's like spend a week, get to know each other, <laughs> see some training exercises as a team. Bo-Katan's like, let's just go straight. Let's get, let's get straight to it. We'll go to Mandalore tomorrow. We'll do this whole... I mean, on paper, her plan makes perfect sense, I guess. You know, we'll go down. We'll scout it out. Once yeah. we're very good, we, we won't all go down at once. Blah, blah, no, blah, we'll just blah. make sure to take all the most important people possible mm. You know, on this singular s- scouting missions where we have no communication with the rest of the fleet. Yeah. Makes sense. And when they get down there, they meet a whole bunch of men. They don't leave just... any leadership person behind. It's all the important people they're going down to do the it's, scouting mission. It's, it's an important mission. Yeah. Very Star Trek, you know. How the captain always gets goes down, even though he's the captain, he should stay on the ship. No, no, no. Real leader leads from the front. The front, you know. I want to know how they, these other Mandalorians, how they survive for so long. Like, what the fuck have they been eating? The planet's literally the, the creatures. I guess. Because <laughs> they are cooking this. They, something, took, out something one, something they took out one of those monsters and they've been living off it the last 50 years. Probably could. It's a lot of salt. Yeah. To make sure it doesn't spoil it. <laughs> the... So when they do, I so coming back to the title of the episode, the spies, the spies. right? Plural. The one spy is obviously right at the start of the episode. That's revealed to be what's her face. Who do you reckon the second spy is? Because it has, you can't be like there isn't one. Not, it's not a missed title. I mean, maybe it's Axe Wolves, Wolves, or whatever his name is. I'll tell you who it is. Who? It's the Armourer. Really? Yeah. That's a... Is it a wild theory, or is it a... I think, I think so. Let me, let me boil down my, my three key pieces okay. of All right. evidence here. She comes down on this trip. Well, hold on. No, she's been she's been weird all season. She's been in general, she's weird, but she's been weird all season. The, okay. You know, lots of weird decisions going on. Also, I'd like to point out the last time that all of her group was attacked, she was miraculously the last person to survive. But anyway. Uh so then we go down on this trip to Mandalore. She's like one of the biggest Mandalore, you know. You you think this would be super exciting. They're heading hmm. to the forge. She's the fucking armorer. <laughs> You'd think this would be super exciting for her. A, a must-see trip. But the second that three people turn up hurt, she's, she goes, I'll take them back. Not get that person to take them back. I'll take them back. That's what a real leader does. Lead from the front. Take, no, no. Make sure they're all back safely. I'm just... I find it very odd that the armorer doesn't want to go to the forge and that she so happens to yeet the fuck out of there and not be there <laughs> when Gideon and all his people show up. I mean, it's an interesting theory. What's also, the motivation? Also, his there? helmet looks exactly like hers. Similar. The horns. Yes. What, what, what's the motivation, though? I don't know. The what's motive. the motive? I don't know. Also, she did a she did a non answer at some point in this episode. Old mate goes, uh, "Oh, wheels on." She goes, "You know, how, ask how where she came from or where they she uh, where they how they survived, etc." And she's like, "Oh, I was on the moon or whatever, blah blah blah." And old mate goes, "Were you Death Watch?" Now, Death Watch Ash was yes. uh, the was the Darth Maul's group. That was the ones he was 
They were the ones he was running. Uh. So he, that, when they had the little civil war happening in the Clone Wars, uh, Death Watch was the group that was trying to take over and like kill Bo Katan and uh, Obi Wan's girlfriend, who was the the the, the lead at the time. Like th- that, Death Watch was the group that was trying to take over Mandalore with Darth Maul being the the leader of that group. It wasn't Paz Vizsla, like yes, in that, yes, yeah. So she he, he gets asked this, and she doesn't say yes, no. She goes, "Oh, Death Watch doesn't exist anymore." Right? It's a very non answer. Mm. Very subversive answer. Mm. I mean, my only like flaw in this idea is that this season has not been that strong, and I don't know if it would have that much planning into it. You know what I mean? No, it wouldn't be. Are you it- giving this season too much of the Mandalorian too much credit? No, this season has not been that strong. However, I can totally see John Favreau and. Dave Filoni's here too, but I mean, John Favreau writes 80% episodes, but the, the two mm. of them just like slap that down. Season finale, that's the big twist. She was the bad guy. Yeah. Motivation would be, in my mind, the, like, and it, the, the only thing I can make, make, so her suddenly being okay with Bo Katan's always been weird. You know, that was mm. very, that was very quick sort of thing. I, I'm going with a, she's, she's made a deal with Gideon where she gets to keep her Mandalore group and he gets to, he gets to be, he gets to rule over Mandalore, but her people get to live there or something like that. No. Yeah. It seems like they just don't want Mandalorians at all. Or maybe he does because he wants them to keep doing their best guys thing. Who the fuck made his armor? I don't know. How does it make best guy armor? <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is that you've got to be a skilled Mandalorian armorer to be able to meld and smite or whatever the term is, best guy smelt. into smelt best guy. It's like a very mm. specific metal or whatever you want to call it. Skilled people, it's not something you could just give to any person they can do. So, who did his armor? Don't know, it's a good question. Just saying. So, this is my theory, this is my theory, but it's just a theory, <laughs> you know. I could be wrong, but the episode is called The Spies. Well, make sure you put it out on social media so you can get credit if it comes through. <laughs> I'll be surprised if I'm not the only person. Search Twitter now. I feel like it's very obvious. Let's go to Twitter. We'll do it live. What should I type in? Um, uh, bad? First, <laughs> first, <laughs> that- some, first, first tweet that came up. Something to us about the armor. Um- the episode was called Spies. She and Moff Gideon both have helmet horns. She conveniently left the planet just before the ambush. Could be, could be in store for a huge twist in the finale. Fucking told. See? I'm telling you. I feel like it was. It wasn't. I, I feel like I'm not digging that deep. I'm either reading into it too much, and so I was. No, one, there's else. no way the armor ain't a spy. She was talking about seeing the forge, blah blah blah, and the first opportunity, opportunity to dip, she took it. Besides, she we only know one spy in the episode was called Slow Spies. Yep. Who's the other? You what? What's your hiding armor? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming around on this theory now? Or? I mean, yeah, a bit more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These two tweets of These two tweets. It's just like a bunch of um Amra Bo Katan like fan fiction. Uh a lot of shipping. Yeah, there's always a lot of shipping. Okay. Yeah, well. Um all right. Uh what else happened in this episode? Not much. Uh they had a well, I mean a lot happened, but I don't know how much there is to Obviously, the the shootout on their little their little platform there when they get cornered by the the jet trooper people, jet stormtroopers, uh, that was kind of cool. But also, I was like, they fuck like you have the high ground. Like, how do you fuck that up? Like, you're literally, they're standing there on the rock. You're in the air. Jesus Christ. Um. Obviously, this all leads to Moff Gideon coming down, trapping him in that room. 
kind of cool. Old mate goes out like a boss. Oh, Pat, so it takes out down like nearly every single one. Takes out nearly every single one and still nearly manages to take out. He nearly kills one Praetorian guard there at the end. Yeah, so they're the Praetorian guard, right? Yeah. The origin origins of the Praetorian guard that we eventually see in the f- Defending Snake? I mean, Pra Praetorian, Praetorian guards are they defended the Emperor. They're always seen side by side with the Emperor. Um, oh, okay. yes. so they've always been like a- they've always been a thing. Yeah, it's not a new it's not a new thing. If you go back and watch like Empire Strikes Back or yeah. know, Jedi or anything like that, you should see it. I can't remember if they're in Empire. No, they're definitely I mean, in they're Jedi, most prominent so. in The Last Jedi. Yeah, because they have so. a fight scene with obviously yeah. Rain. Um fucking Ben. Yeah. Um the yeah, but that was very cool. He, ne- he nearly gets one right in the side, but then he gets stopped and he has to get stabbed multiple times. So, yeah, it was a pretty boss ending um, for, for that character. So, I'm Rip. glad that's... I'm, it's weird to say, but I'm sort of glad that someone died, <laughs> you know, because I just... Amongst there was a second. I thought there's a chance, you know, they might off. Those yeah. last two, I thought he was just going to yeet them off the side and go with them, like do the whole, like, diving... No, but I've considered for a second, for a second, they might just kill Jin right here. Wouldn't that be like a totally uh, Game of Thrones esque mm. moment? That Croker <laughs> Croker goes to the dark side after that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone comes out. They've got a golf club. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tell like, they take the helmet off first because they have to. Yeah. A couple <laughs> <things>. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> I'm surprised he did. Yeah. Just kill him. Grogu like forces the door open, goes out there, fucking lightning bolts them all. <laughs> <laughs> He's just yeah, clicking. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Power. <laughs> <laughs> and then he becomes Snoke. Uh, also, Taika Waititi got paid like ten thousand dollars just to come <laughs> in and record. Yes, no. no. <laughs> well, you know. They may have had a yes and a no from when he was last time, you know? No. Nah. Don just- Favlo just whipped out the iPhone. Can you say yes? Can you say no? Cheers, mate. Yeah. It's probably like, do you like me? As I said, yes or no, and then yeah. tried to get the other opposite response. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else? Like major things we need to discuss? No, I mean, it would, uh, we had the little... Paz Vizsla, uh X Wolves fight, you know, yeah. on board on the ship after you know they don't understand the rules of chess, I guess. <laughs> whatever space chess, whatever game they're playing, differentiating rules, uh, and you know, old old uh, old Grogu stops the fight. No, yeah, no, yeah. and then he gives a little nod, which was the best part. <laughs> Looks up at Dad and goes. I got this. <laughs> you taught your print as well. I didn't teach you that. <laughs> yeah. I want to keep both your ass down. Uh, this is the way. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what do you think next episode is? You know, why did Moth Gideon sk- spare Jin? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Just this is a Dr. Evil, Austin Powers thing. Just I kill guess. him, Dad. Yeah, just no, kill. I gotta tell you my whole plan first. Just I'll we can kill him together. I'll get the gun. We'll kill him now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is? Like, just kill him. No, I gotta like take him back and monologue. Explain and tell him my whole why speech later. Sim- like about my whole plan. I want to teach it. Show, introduce him to the entire Shadow Council yeah, yeah. and like, uh, yeah, yeah. I want to kill so him. It turns out they've had a base on Mandalore this entire time. They were the ones who blew up. Uh, What's her face's castle? Yeah. Mm. Interesting. I mean, that that's what I assume they just sent them out yes. from there to the castle, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. As you pri- so obviously this screened at Star Wars Celebration. Were you surprised yep. no spoilers kind of came out? I sure I would assume that some fuck words were putting spoilers out there. I didn't see anything. No, I didn't see anything either. No. You know, between us, we like the whole entire internet so yeah so i yeah i didn't see nothing <laughs> but I, I would assume that some people definitely would have s- spoiled it some someone would have got some people would have got unlucky i assume but yeah um yeah well what do you yeah so what do you think the finale is what do you think the guy is there 
Well, clearly they rescue Jin and then they fight off Moff Gideon and then he scolds back to his shadow council all sad and depressed. It's like, oh, would you take Mandalore again? Like, no, nah, <laughs> screw Mandalore. We'll be fine. We'll figure it out. And then I'll make the Pelion and then the Thrawn busts like, in. Yeah, it's because Thrawn's like, coming, right? Because Thrawn. <laughs> Thrawn busts in the door. He's like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> I mean, I know I said no before about Thrawn coming back, but I guess if they did have a, like, after credit scene at the Shadow Council. Comes in and says, I'm here for the Empire. <laughs> where he just comes in and he's like, yeah, it just says one simple sentence or something like, I was like, can you all shut I mean, even you, just I heard you've been talking face. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in and just shoots Moth Gideon in the head. I mean, that'd be pretty great. Or like burns half his face off or something like that. You know? yeah. That would be a very original idea. No, it's not the kind of character for one is though. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, very cool uh, episode. Looking forward to the finale next week, of course. Uh, thank you for joining us on this episode of The Mandalorians. We've got one more episode to go. Exciting. And then after that, we'll be have a few weeks off and then we'll be back to talk about, um, what the fuck's Visions. Visions. Oh, like yeah. The, the trailer looks so freaking good. Trailer looks good. Uh, of course, check out everything else on ExplosionNumber.com. Check out all the podcasts and stuff over there. Follow us on Twitter by heading to ExplosionNumber.com slash Twitter. Come talk to us on our Discord if you'd like. ExplosionNumber.com slash Discord. And until next week, we have spoken. Thorn should come in and he just says, fucking Space Whales. <laughs>